Hey guys, this is Tim, back again with another video. And as you can see, we're in a completely different setting than we are normally. Uh, if you already know me, uh, normally you probably know me from just Houdini tutorials and just my screen being recorded and me explaining cool Houdini tips and tricks and stuff about projects that I did. But today we are here in a, uh, well, in a new setting, uh, part of the new, new shared workspace also that I rent. So this is a really nice uh, studio space that I can record videos like this. So this is really cool. Um, so today I want to talk with you about the new storage server that I'm building. So I was really in need of having more storage for my work. Um, so if you don't know um, about my work, so I do a lot of simulation stuff. So I do Houdini simulations uh, that generates a lot of data. So uh, fire simulations, flip simulations, stuff like that. So I really, was really in need of having more storage to do that kind of stuff. And I was looking into stuff like Synology or QNAP servers. Um, but they didn't really tick the boxes for me. Sure, they're easy to use. You can buy them, you can put them down, you put some drives in and they work. But there's a couple of things why I wasn't really keen on going that direction. Um, so first off, they are not really user replaceable. Um, so if, the, if it breaks, you need to send it in and then wait a couple of weeks for it to return. And of course, yeah, you don't have your data in the meantime. So then you'd need to buy a new box and put the disk in and stuff like that. So that's one thing. And uh, from the reviews that I saw, it doesn't give me the performance that I want and also it's less flexible than anything I want to build myself. So for my own build, I decided to build a FreeNAS server. I will talk more about what FreeNAS is uh, in a little bit, but this will give me the performance that I want. It will be super user, uh, well, upgradable basically. Um, and because I'm building it anyway, uh, I thought maybe let's make a video about it because I really love tech. I've been building workstations since I was like 16 and I'm almost 32 now. I know I'm, I'm ancient, but I've never really built a proper dedicated server before. And I thought I really love tech. I always watch these tech channels myself, like Linus Tech Tips, Chase to Send and all kinds of uh, those types of channels. I really love watching that content, but all of that content is really aimed at gamers, people playing games, or it's about video editing. And of course, there's, there's, there's crossovers between the work that I do, but I, there's, there's, uh, like I wanted, wanted something that would specifically be good for my use case and also somewhat still budget friendly. I mean, the build itself was pretty expensive, but it's it's still, it's relatively affordable. If you compare it to something like a uh, Synology, uh, like a, a DS1817 Plus, um, it's it's only a little bit more expensive. Like the DS1817 Plus, like at around thousand bucks, all of the hardware here was like, uh, excluding the hard drives. So all of the hardware uh, without the hard drives was around, I think around 1700, 1800 ish. And then you add up the drives, of course, and and the network switch that I have uh, in the back there. Um, so it's not that much more expensive, but it's it's a lot more flexible. And if you really like techy stuff like me, then it's a, it's a good good solution. And I figured, wanted to share it with you. If you want to do the same thing um, and you like doing that stuff, then you can replicate the build, I guess, because this is tested and you know what kind of performance you're going to get. So I really hope you enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe uh, down below. Uh, this video will be in multiple parts. So this part is going to be about introduction to why I um, built the FreeNAS server. We're going to have something about building the thing and then later we're going to have something about the performance and the extra services that I'm going to run on the thing. So really hope you enjoy it. Um, and yeah, let's dive right into all of the other stuff. All right, so let's talk a little bit about FreeNAS. So what is FreeNAS exactly? So FreeNAS is an open source um, operating system for, for NAS. Uh, it's built on top of FreeBSD and FreeBSD is, well, it's not Linux. It's like originally it was like a fork of Linux and they, they went their separate ways. It's sort of similar, but it's not the same. So it's built on FreeBSD and at the core it uses ZFS. So what ZFS is, it's a replacement for both RAID and the file system. Uh, so it's two in one. It has a lot of really cool features. Um, it's very powerful. Uh, it, it ZFS stands for Zettabyte File System. Uh, it, it, it supports really large data sets. Um, it's expandable, so you can like add more pools later. Uh, you can, uh, it has snapshots. So snapshots are 
Um, for example, if I accidentally delete a drive from my network share, I can recover it from a SHAP snapshot. I can recover uh, previous uh, versions of it. So all kinds of cool stuff like that. And it's expandable. Like right now I'm just, I'm adding eight drives uh, for a total of 48 terabytes. Um, uh, well, not all of it will be usable, of course, but later if I want to grow out the pool, I can add eight more drives and grow the pool um, and like expand up in, uh, upon it like that. And I wouldn't have that possibility if I had just a regular Synology drive or I would have to buy the super high-end Synology stuff. But then we're, of course, talking about way more, like way higher budgets than anything you get, uh, you get over here. Um, so stuff like that is really cool. So there's multiple types uh, of uh, ways you can set up ZFS. Uh, so you probably know what RAID is. RAID is you can uh, pull multiple drives together on a RAID card, and then you get a uh, it's and then your system sees it as one big 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 drive, and you get for like uh, depending on what type of uh, RAID type you choose, you get different types of resiliency or performance or whatever. So FreeNAS works a little bit different. Instead of adding it in a, with a RAID card, you don't want to use a RAID card, so you don't at all. Uh, you had let ZFS handle all of that. Um, so what you do is you create uh, VDEVs, which are virtual devices, and you configure them in, uh, in a way to pull together in a certain way. There's, there's multiple ways of doing that. There's RAID Z1, RAID Z2, um, there's, there's mirrored, and there's striped. But you can combine these also in, uh, in multiple ways, and they can all add together to the, to the same pool. So RAID Z1 is with one parity drive. So that's if you have five, if you have five drives, then one drive can fill. Uh, if you have RAID Z2, you have six drives, two can fill, for example, but also multiples, of course. You can also do RAID Z, Z, uh, Z3 if you want, and three drives can fill. Um, but you can also, what you can do is you can have mirrors. Um, so with a mirror, the data will be the same on uh, each of the drives. So if I have two drives and I write something to one of the drives, it will also, the same data will also be on the, uh, on the other drive. Um, so if one drive fills, I still have the data on the other one. Then with uh, striped, it's a little bit different. So one part of the file goes on one drive and one part of the file goes on another drive. Um, so you get the speed of two drives. So if you read from it, you have the speed of both of those two drives. But if one fails, then, well, then you lose all of the data. But what you can do in ZFS, you can also combine this. So it's sort of similar to something like RAID 10. So what you will do is you will create a couple of pairs of uh, mirrors and then stripe across uh, those. So what I will, so let's say for example, these two are mirrored, these two are mirrored, these two are mirrored, these two are mirrored, and then I'm gonna, I can stripe across these and then I get the read performance of four of the drives uh, and I can still lose up to two. Well, it depends on where they fail. Like, but like in theory, all of these could fail and like they would, you would still have, uh, have your data, but like if one would fail here and one would fail here, then yeah, I mean, you have uh, like the redundancy is a little bit different than well, something like, uh, like RAID Z. For, because for example, in RAID Z, you can use any, any random drive. Uh, and with this, it kind of depends on which drive fails. So I'm going to do that because I get a lot more performance if I do that. Um, because RAID, uh, RAID Z is a little bit slower. Um, and also when you rebuild it, so if a drive fails, you need to rebuild it. The rebuild is very slow. And when you're rebuilding, the, the chance of another drive failing are quite high as it needs to like read all of this data. Uh, while with, with uh, Stripe mirrors, um, you, it only needs to read data from one of the disks. So the chance of failure is much smaller and it's a lot faster. Like theoretically, I'm hoping to get about 800, 900 megabytes a second sequential reads uh, over, uh, over the 10 gig, 10 gig ethernet. So fingers crossed that that'll all work out. So that's the way I'm going to, uh, well, want to configure my, um, my FreeNAS and then hopefully have, have super fast sequential reads for if I have these super heavy uh, SIMs that I can just read from them very fast. And because I have a separate server like this, that has all of, the, all of the backup stuff baked in, it can have some virtual machine stuff, sharing functions and all of that other cool stuff, which we're gonna talk like a lot more about later. So let's, uh, let's dive a little bit in, in about, well, why I chose this specific hardware. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the hardware that I have here. Um, so yeah, let's first start off with the CPU. So what I have here is a Xeon uh, Silver 4210. 
Um, you might ask why not a AMD CPU because if you guys know me you know I really like AMD. Um, the thing is FreeNAS just runs better uh, with Intel and I really want to avoid having any trouble um, yeah with like instability and stuff so I'd rather go with like a proper like Xeon so I know that it's that it's gonna work and I was super lucky with this uh, with this listing because this is a uh, like it's in a black box and you might ask why is it in a black box it's because it's it was a bulk listing so bulk listings are meant for OEMs so uh, machine builders um, and this was uh, so it was 200 bucks cheaper than it would normally be so that's uh, so that's quite cool and uh, so it saved me a lot of money to like go with this Xeon instead of just doing a um, just just buying the regular one. I mean, I don't care for the box anyway, so should be completely fine, uh, completely fine in that regard. Uh, so yeah, what I have here is uh, one bank of 32 gigabyte ECC memory, and there's another one over there. So 64 gigabytes in total, and these are registered DIMMs. So what FreeNAS does is because it checksums all of the data, um, well, let's, let's rewind a little bit. FreeNAS runs completely in memory. So it just boots from USB drives. So we have USB thumb drives here. It just boots from those and those will be mirrored. And then it runs completely in memory. So if you encounter a memory problem, then, well, you're like, you might lose data and you might lose a pool. So you want to avoid that, like if it's, uh, if it's at all possible. So you kind of want to use ECC memory. It's re recommended to use ECC memory. Also because what Z uh, ZFS does, so FreeNAS runs on ZFS, which is the file system I talked about earlier. And what that does, it checks some data uh, and if it encounters, like uh, if, if it sees that the file is corrupted, then it can repair it. Uh, but you want to make sure that everything you write to the disk will of course not be corrupted to begin with uh, so that's where ecc like this comes in because if it, this encounters a memory error it can correct it so every you know it's, you, you can be practically certain that everything that gets written to disk is is legit um, so that's kind of why you want ecc memory and with freeness it's kind of recommended to have one gigabyte of memory for every a uh, terabyte of storage that you have. So I have 48 terabytes of storage. So I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. And you might ask, why didn't I go for four 16 gigabyte DIMMs instead? Um, and it's because like FreeNAS does a lot of caching in RAM. Um, and the more RAM you add, the faster your performance is gonna be. And it cares more about the amount of RAM that you have than the bandwidth. So even though I'm gonna run single channel with this, it should be fine for my use cases. And now I have more expandability. If I wanna add more storage later, if I wanna add more performance, I can just buy more ECC RAM and the whole thing will just be a lot faster that way. So I just want more expandability because with this board, I can add up to eight banks. So I can up, add up to 256 gigabytes with the 32 gig TIMs that I have right now. So that should be quite nice. So that's basically that. So with the hard drives, I just went with um, Seagate Iron Wolf drives. And I know some people don't like Seagate drives, but personally, I never had any problems with it. And also when you look at uh, Backblaze statistics, so Backblaze is an unlimited cloud backup uh, solution. Um, and they you go through a ton of drives and they publish these monthly or quarterly statistics over drive failures. and. Uh, I remove drives perform pretty well uh, and these are faster than the WD red drives uh, and performance is more important for my case anyway so if something were to fill then I can just replace it and these are so these are eight uh, six terabyte drives so 48 terabytes in total so that's the, that's the hard drives about the motherboard so this mother so this motherboard, I'm like Linus, I'm dropping stuff. <laughs> so the motherboard is quite cool. Um, so what this has, is, let me see if I can open it up. So it has um, a couple of cool things that I really wanted to. It has IPMI and it has 10 gigabit ports. So maybe let's see if I can, I don't want to get it completely out of the thing yet, but maybe if you can see it. So it has a couple of network ports, as you can see, it has uh, three network ports. I'm not sure if it's visible. I don't want to take it out of the plastic yet. I'm going to do that in a little bit when I assemble the whole thing. Um, but it has two 10 gigabit ports integrated. And of course I need 10 gigabit to have enough performance to actually, well, to actually well have benefit from all of this goodness. 
Um, so that's cool. And of course, right now I have enough for one uh, enough with one gigabit port. But if I ever build a full uh, SSD um, pool, for example, if I get like because I could like add an extra. Uh, I could add like extra SSDs and build an extra pool. Then it might be useful to aggregate these two 10 gigabit links. So I get like 20 gigabytes in total. Um, because I have a managed switch, so I can combine connections. It's called link aggregation. So then it might be useful. And another thing is the third port on here. It's an IPMI port. And I hadn't heard about IPMI until, until a couple of months ago. And IPMI is really cool. It's remote management for your computer. So you can log into it over the internet or over ethernet. So it has a separate port that you plug it into. And then from that port, you can, um, you can manage everything on the board. So you can even go into the BIOS over the network. So that's super cool. And I'm going to show you all of that later in a later video when we start configuring the whole thing. Um, so that's like super cool. So that's, of course, if you, if you're, if you're running, like if you're not in the office, you need to manage stuff, then you can do it through IPMI. So that's really, really, really dope. Um, and also a good thing about that is that you don't need to add a GPU in it because this is onboard graphics for the IPMI. So uh, that's why I don't have a GPU in here anyway. You might've thought this was a GPU, but it's not. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, maybe right now. Um, well, let's maybe first talk about one more thing, because this also has a lot of PCIe expansion ports, which might be nice if I want to expand the, store, the service server later. So for example, what I could do is if I want more drives, uh, like uh, if I want to add eight more drives, I don't have room in the case right now. What I could do is buy an external box, add drives into that and connect them through um, serial attached SCSI. So that's where this thing comes in. So this is a serial attached SCSI card. It's an HBA controller that stands for host bus adapter. Um, so this is not a RAID controller. It just passes through the connections to the um, uh, uh, through FreeNAS and then FreeNAS can control that. You don't want a RAID controller on FreeNAS. You want FreeNAS to be able to manage all of the drives. And now you might ask, like, how am I supposed to connect these drives to this thing? Because there's like only two ports. And that's the cool with uh, Serial Test SCSI. So it's backwards compatible with SATA. So each of these have four, have, uh, six, have a, so each of these have four six gigabyte connections. Uh, so similar to SATA uh, six. And they can split into, um, into four SATA connections with these cables that I have here. So I can connect my hard drives with these ports um, and then I can connect the hard drives that way. So that's, um, so that's quite cool. Um, so that way I will be able to add all of my eight cards through this card. But if I ever want to add an external port, like I have a lot of PCIe lanes, so I could add one, one more of these cards, but with extra, well, like with an external backplane and add them that way. And then I could like grow the pool that I already have. So that's, um, that's why the expandability is, is like quite nice. Yeah. So about uh, the memory as so I was talking about Freenas running in memory before. And, uh, so that's where also this baby comes in. So what happens if I do some writes into Freenas and suddenly power goes out? Do I lose the data? Well, you would say yes. That's where this baby comes in. So this is a UPS. Uh, it's a 480 watt UPS, which should be enough to run all of this. Um, and basically um, what this will do. So this has a network, uh, like uh, an ethernet port as well. So if power fills, the server will keep running on this. This is a battery, battery integrated. So it will keep running on that. Uh, but because it's network connected, this will tell FreeNAS that, oh, oh, there was a power failure. And then FreeNAS will dump everything it has in RAM to the disks. And then it will initiate a safe shutdown. So you can be sure that you don't lose data. So that's why UPS is super important to use for something like this. So you don't lose any data and you're, you're, well, you're, you're kind of certain that everything will be, well, uh, will work as intended. So that's why I got the UPS. So that's quite nice. Uh, the power supply is a Corsair power supply. I got this one because it supports 10 uh, SATA devices and I have 10 SATA devices. So that's, that's the reason I got this one. It's gold rated, so it's quite uh, uh, yeah, good for the environment as well, I guess. Um, it's going to run 24 seven, so it's kind of important to get a good power supply anyway. 
So about the case, so I didn't want a server case because I don't know if you've ever been in a server room, but servers are super loud because of the fans because they're supposed to be in a server room. And the space I'm in here, it's a shared, uh, shared space. Uh, so there's multiple companies here and there's no separate server room. So I didn't want anything that's super loud. So I just got a, I got a fractal design case. So you can uh, see it here. Uh, it's in the box, so I'm gonna take it out, right? I'm gonna do that when we're gonna do the build. Um, so fractal design case, it has enough space for all of my hard drives. I got like extra hard drive caddies, uh, two extra, because by default it only comes for uh, with six caddies for six drives, so two more. Um, so that's gonna be the case. This is nice and quiet and uh, should, be, uh, should be very nice to, uh, yeah, for this uh, server. And if I ever want to move everything to a server case, of course I could, I could do that. But this, uh, this would sh suit my purposes uh, perfectly fine for what I'm, uh, for what I'm doing now. Um, so yeah, I think that's basically all of the, uh, all of the hard drive stuff. So I guess we can go into the building now. See on CPU, quite a massive, massive thing. That's what she said. So I didn't want to go with the uh, small fans. So this one should be hopefully be quiet. It's rated for like 30 decibels. So it should hopefully be good. And let's, uh, let's hope this also, uh, this works fine. But it's cooler, it's got a very weird mounting mechanism. So I need to put it in like this plastic thing first. And uh, I guess now we do the other stuff. So it's kind of a weird mounting mechanism. But I think I got it to work. All right, so I guess let's open the power supply. I'm a little confused with the motherboard. I got the CPU on there. I'm a little confused with the, with the motherboard and how it all um, how it will connect, but I guess we will make it work. Yeah. You can clearly see that it's not aimed at consumers. There's not really a lot of uh, uh, leaflets that go with it to explain the connectors. They expect people to know what they're doing, which I do. I just have never built a server before. All right, I guess got a little power supply over here. Fully modular, and it's nice. All right, let's see if this wants to do anything. Yeah, there we go. It already went off. Okay, I guess we post. And uh, it makes sense that this is erroring, but uh, at least now we know that this is working. So I guess we can put it in the case now and uh, yeah. Time to uh, screw everything in. So uh, let's see. So I'm mounting all of these drives. It's a, a lot of work with eight of these drives. I need to screw them all in. And and yeah, we'll only do so far and the rest is still going so let's see all right so there we go eight hard drives and two ssds all filled up everything uh, nicely labeled so i guess time to close the whole thing down and see how she goes and install the whole thing how cool is that the rp mine but with uh, everything working now, I guess we can uh, yeah, start installing. So the, uh, the server is built and it works. We're inside of FreeNAS here, as you can see. Um, so that's where we're going with part two. So part one has come to an end. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to smash the like button. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and also lets me know if you actually like this type of stuff. Um, so yeah, I will hopefully see you in the next part and in the next part we're going to, I'm just going to show you how to install FreeNAS, all of the cool features, I'm going to talk about my backup server and a lot of other cool stuff. The second video is even longer than this one. So uh, yeah, really hope you enjoyed it. 
And if you want to keep up to date with the stuff I do, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post something new. I have a lot of cool stuff coming up uh, in, the next, in the next couple of months. Uh, a lot of cool uh, Patreon exclusive stuff planned. I'm going to do a whole, uh, a whole Houdini introductory tutorial on YouTube. I have a new website planned. A lot of cool stuff. So make sure to subscribe so you get notified whenever I post something new. And I really hope to see you in the second part of this video. And remember, if you want to build the same server, all of the parts are in the description of this video. So uh, you can do that. Well, hopefully see you in the next part, guys. Peace.